This will be a recorded session. We have two of our faculty representatives here today. Um, Leah Mazur, Professor Leah Mazur. Did I say your name right? You did. Oh my gosh, nobody ever gets it right on the first time, so thank you. <laughs> and Dr. Rhoda. I got that right, correct? Yes, you did. And first name is Mark. Okay. Well, I typically address people as professor unless I know for sure that they are a doctor and then I try to address them with that because it's an earned degree and I feel like that's a respectful thing on my end. So um, okay. students feel welcome to um, address our panel with their questions. They're going to give you some information first and then we'll have some time for questions. You can also um, add your questions to the chat if you don't want to use your unmuted feature and we'll get to that in just a few minutes, okay? Without further ado, we'll uh, send this over to Leah Mazur, uh, one of our professors. Hello, everyone. It's wonderful to have everybody here. Um, every little bit of social interaction is giving me life recently because I'm really struggling with this. So um, it's great to have you all here. Thanks for joining us. Um, my name is Leah Mazur, um, Professor Mazur. Leah, you can really address me however you see fit. Um, I'm an assistant professor um, in theater, film, and media studies. Um, I specifically focus in theater design. I'm also a resident stenographer. Um, so I design all of the set and costumes for our main stage production and I teach the bulk of our design courses and then I also do a few um, like general ed courses so I've taught um, core 101 which everybody will most likely be enrolled in whenever you show up next year um, so I teach I've taught core 101 and then I also teach a few other courses in theater so I do topics courses and all kinds of fun stuff um, yeah Mark what about what do you do hello everyone I'm glad you're here my name is Mark Rhoda um, I am a hybrid, meaning my background is theater, but I am concentrating more now on film and media studies. Uh, my doctorate is in theater from the University of California, Berkeley. Uh, most of my background actually is theater and theater studies and performance. Um, my area of expertise now um, has moved into film and media studies, particularly with a focus on horror film. So for in the in TFMS, in Theater, Film, and Media Studies Department, most of my responsibilities have to do with film and media studies, although I do direct for the main stage, and I do teach one of the um, fundamental intro to performance classes. It's not an acting class, it's just an intro to performance. Um, <clears throat> I generally teach horror film, film history, world cinema, and intro to film and media studies, and share responsibilities with the chair of the department, who is our media maker, film and video maker, uh, David Ellsworth. Excellent. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Excellent. Um, should we have students kind of like introduce themselves and then give us a little bit, give us like what they're interested in or what they, how has it been going? I think absolutely people? if they want to take for that sure. step and introduce themselves, for sure. If you are a student that would prefer not to do that at this month at this time you can definitely um, do that as well and unclick your mute if you want to introduce yourself okay for sure should I just go through the screen and ask people for yeah, that would be great cool beans why don't we start with Luke Miller hi Luke hi hi tell us who you are what you do hi um so what do I do? So I am in Towson High School in Maryland. I'm a junior right now. So I kind of just started my uh, college search and I visited St. Mary's not too long ago. Um, and I really liked it there. And it's been one of my top choices um, ever since. Oh, great. What is your interest in terms of um, theater or film and media or both? So I... I like doing films. Mm. So I, I kind of started off doing films around 2016, I think, where I started doing stop motion films. Mm. And mm. I've been doing that mostly since, but I've also been moving into just, uh, just film in general. Okay. Mm. Cool. cool. Awesome. Excellent. We're glad to have you. Thank you. Um, nice meeting you, Luke. Yeah, nice meeting you. Um, Thank you. What about Rain Anderson, the, the bearded dragon with a cigarette? Lizard with a cigarette. <laughs> So I am a currently senior at Walter Johnson High School, and I am interested in theatrical set design and construction. Mm, cool. Have you done any in high school? Yeah, I'm part of the, my high school's theater crew. Cool. Excellent, excellent. Well, I do 
all of that at the mm-hmm. school. And then I also freelance. So it'll be uh-huh. great to have you join us. Have you been able to visit? Oh, uh, yes. I visited like, like, I believe like three or so times. Oh, wow. Like, you're yeah, it's like very simple accepted student type things. Uh-huh. Okay, Perfect. cool. Excellent. Well, we're g- glad to have you with us. Thanks so much. Mm-hmm. Um, Ellie Ortel, did I pronounce that right? Ellie Ortel? Yeah. Hello, Ellie. Um, I'm a senior at Mount of Sales Academy in Catonsville, Maryland, uh-huh. and um, I'm interested in theater and acting, and then I'm doing a minor in dance to hopefully go on to, like, Broadway stuff. Cool. Um, there wasn't really, like, a, like, singing option available, but, like, I'm just doing as much as I can, and then hopefully later going on to more, like, Broadway-style stuff. For sure. Yeah, I think that's great. We have two students currently, one who's a senior and then another who will be going into her junior or sophomore year, excuse me. Um, And they've both majored in theater um, in TFMS and theater performance or theater with a performance emphasis, I guess, or bent to their curriculum. And then um, they've also majored, double majored in music or minored in music. And they have both, they both are really interested in musical theater. Um, So I think that that's a totally viable option for you at this, at this institution. It's pretty exciting. Uh, what year? What year are you, Ellie? I'm a senior. Senior. So you're looking for the fall of 2021. No, no. I'm coming. Uh, I'm coming this fall. Oh, for, oh, this fall. Oh, cool. Oh, so, we're doing hair in the spring, by the way. Sorry. Didn't you mention musical theater? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So I did. Um, so my school is an all girls school and we pair up with our all boys, like our brother's school to do shows. And so our, so my school just put on Matilda um, this past February. And then we have been working on putting on Newsies um, this oh. like just recently. And then that got postponed, but hopefully we're going to try and do it late in the summer, um, but we're going to see what happens. But like, we still, we're sending out like blocking and stuff or like still working on it. So hopefully that happens. Mm-hmm. Good, good. Well, break a leg. We hope it happens for you. Yes, we hope it happens. <laughs> We've had so much work canceled. It really stinks, but um, cool beans. We're glad to have you with us. Um, how about Sylvie Jones? Is that, did I say that correctly, Sylvie? Yes, that's correct. Hi, Hi I'm Sylvie. I am a junior in high school and I'm in Northern Virginia. Um, I'm kind of interested in all of it, theater, film, media studies, but lately really interested in um, film studies. Mm, oh, cool. Yeah. What, what area are you interested in? Um, screenwriting. Mm, oh, cool. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Our, our resident maker, the chair of the department, also teaches screenwriting as well. Really? Teaching it next semester now. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's really popular with English majors as well. I know a lot of people that are English also like to kind of like do this cross-pollination type thing, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, we're glad to have you with us. Thank you. Um, Who's on Pamela's iPad? (laughs) (laughs) Would you like to introduce yourself? What's up? Hello. Um, I don't know if you can see me. Uh, Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm not Pamela. That's my mom, but we were having some technical um, difficulties here. So I, my name is Morgan Thomas and I right now I'm a senior at Redeemer Classical Christian School, which mm-hmm. is in Bel Air, Maryland. Um, I have a lot of experience in film and theater. I've been in a lot of shows and a lot of performances. Um, I have a major interest in screenwriting as well. Cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. That's good. That's super exciting. Um, have you ever thought about doing playwriting as well? Um, I have, and I have. I've written. I've written some plays and some performances with my friends, and we've like got together and like played them out. But I haven't done anything on a big scale before. So maybe in the future. Yeah, that's super fun. One of our faculty members um, has got her PhD in performance as public practice from the University of Texas at Austin. Um, and she's actually doing a class in the fall, um, which is community based theater and students do really all of it. But playwriting is definitely a big portion of that. So I think that you could find that pretty interesting. Yeah. Excellent. We're glad to have you with us. Glad to be here. Um, Connor Sulio. So, well, I'm really sorry. About Don't worry you. about it. Don't worry about it. Everybody gets it wrong. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Connor Shulo. Cool. Um, I'm a sophomore at Mount St. Joseph High School in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to the uh, interest in either uh, film or theater, um, I, I appreciate theater, but I've never been involved with it. I'm much more into the film 
uh, side with uh, my interest in that field would be direction and post-production. Uh -huh. So I've been working on video editing for a friend of mine. He wants to, he makes music, so I'm making a video for him, music video okay. for him. Cool. Um, and I'm learning how to use different Adobe software, that kind of thing. Um, well, I, I can't answer that since I'm not the maker. Who you would need to get in touch with is um, David Ellsworth, the chair, mm. who teaches that. Now, we, I mean, we will, I think, at the end of the introductions, go through a really quick presentation, if you will, that we will annotate. And I'm assuming, based on what Leah has told me, that on that presentation is the web address to our website. Yeah. Um, and you can reach out to any member of the faculty that you want. So if you have any questions about film production, for example, the person to reach out to is the chair of the department, Dave Ellsworth, and all of his information is contained there. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. We're glad to have you with us. Yes. Hello. Um, how about Alexis? It doesn't have a last name, it just has Alexis. So, um, hi, I am, do you see me? Yes, we can. Yes. So, um, I'm Alexis Pagan. I'm from Puerto Rico. Um, I'm a senior in American Academy. Um, I want to study uh, musical theater. And if God help me, help me when then in the future, if I get to study here, I am. I was actually uh, admitted to the uh, St. Mary's. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. if God let me, um, well, I I will be study in St. Mary's. And let's see if my, I have a, a goal to be in Broadway or I don't know, maybe let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. and recently, uh, I've been working in a musical that was produced in Puerto Rico. Um, actually from the movie Frozen, I was doing Frozen. Cool. And mm -hmm. I was, um, I play one of the, of the, of the main characters. Um, and it was a great experience. And thanks to that, actually, um, I wanted to study musical theater. <laughs> Cool. What what year are you, Alexis? I'm from Puerto Rico. But no, what year? Oh, um, you're a senior at American, right? Uh, yeah, I'm a senior. Yeah, so yeah. Okay. okay, all right, cool. Excellent. That's Excellent. super exciting. Yes. Well, we don't have um, we don't have a degree in musical theater per se, right? But students mm -hmm. do have a lot of flexibility. So, like I mentioned um, to Ellie, was it? Did I mention it to Ellie um, that you can double major? Ah, oh, thumbs up, Kurt. Um, you can double major in theater and music, um, and then you can take. That's the thing. That's one of the things that I saw. So that's why I make the the application. Mm. <laughs> Very good. Well, we're excited to have you here. Yes. Thank cool. You. Excellent. Um, Casey, I don't have a last name for you. I just have Casey. Okay, where do you see Casey? Boom, oh. right there. We can't hear you. There you go. Yeah, my name is Casey Boyne and um, I go to Mount of Sales Academy, like Ellie. We actually know each other in theater. We've been oh. doing a lot of shows together. Um, and I'm a junior. And I'm kind of into musical theater. I've been doing musical theater like most of my life, but I also really like film. And I can see that as something I would definitely like maybe want to try in college and see if I like it, so. Awesome. That sounds spectacular. I don't know, Mark, do you know of any musical theater folk we've had um, also do film? I mean, like I got, Kenna is, a, is truly a film major, isn't she? And so people yes. do, yeah, Just they do, theater. yeah, theater mm -hmm. and film, so. That's a good but thing. To double dip in. Beyond that, I know very few hybrid students in musical theater and film. Um, that is a very interesting, interesting combination. Mm -hmm. um, and there's certainly a hell of a lot of musical films. Right. Uh, but in, in terms of interests, we rarely have that kind of hybrid, uh, which I think is exciting nonetheless. It really is exciting, but we rarely have that kind of hybrid. Yeah. Excellent. It's great to, it's great to meet you, Casey. Thank you. Um, how about Annalie Hampton? Yes? Yeah. Hey, how are you? Uh, I'm Annie Lee, which is like 10, 15 minutes away from St. Mary's. I'm okay. on double majoring in English and TFMS, and uh -huh. I'm really interested in screenwriting. Cool. Excellent. That's super exciting to hear. Are you gonna, are, you, you said you are coming in the fall? Yeah, I am. Okay, cool. Have you gotten a chance to look at the classes for next semester? Uh, sorry, can you repeat that? I can't really. Is it choppy? Yeah. Have you gotten a chance to look at the classes for next semester? 
Uh, no, I haven't yet. Okay. Well, screenwriting, I'm certain, will come back around during your time here. Um, so that's super exciting. There, We've got three English people, I believe, who are TFMS minors, two of which are doing an SMP and, and they're writing. So that's pretty exciting. Cool. Excellent. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Um, who do we have next? Marguerite Marinakis? Did I say that one right? Yeah, you said it right. Cool. Hi. Um, hi, I'm a senior at Key School in Annapolis, cool. and I'm actually not sure if I'm coming to St. Mary's or not yet, but I'm interested in film and media studies. Mm. What exactly, Marguerite? Um, probably directing. Ah, uh, as in film directing. So you're more interested in the production side. Yeah. And in the study of film. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, cool. Yes, you would have ample opportunity here. Yes, you would. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thanks for coming. Um, next, we have Lily Thomas. Mm. Yes. Lily yeah. Thomas. Lily. Thumbs up, thumbs down. If you don't want to talk, you don't have to. Okay. I okay. We'll move on to Sophia Andreas. Andreas, Sophia Andreas. Your microphone is on. Hi. There you are. Hi. Yeah, it's Andreas. Um, I'm interested in um, being in the productions at St. Mary's because I do the productions at uh, my high school. So I was just more interested in like um, that, so. Do you like performance or do you like yeah. backstage stuff? Well, I want to get more into like the technical side of it. Yeah, uh -huh, um, for sure. Because my high school does a really good job with like the costumes and everything. So I want to learn more about like the, how to do that, so. Excellent. Well, we're glad to have you with us, Sophia. Um, uh, I'm gonna try this one, Sarah Gers. Okay, hi, I'm Sarah Jib. I was close. Close enough. I, I knew. <laughs> um, I'm a senior at McDonough High School in Southern Maryland, and I'll be attending St. Mary's in the fall. Well, oh, cool. So I'm really excited to do whatever the theater film media studies involves. I'm interested in kind of everything. I am a performer, so I'm, you know, musical theaters and the plays is what I've been doing. Mm. But my real interest is um, like cartoon storyboarding and voice acting. Oh, so cool. That's kind cool. of a interesting and like separate thing from a lot of stuff but that's like where my main like interest mm -hmm. lies so I figured that this may be something I can like explore a little more here for sure that's great <laughs> Absolutely. So, you like, so you like sequential art yeah <laughs> cool beans it's great to meet you great to meet you um uh how about Jay Foss Jay Foss Yes, no. Hi, one, one sec. Oh, there he is. Hi. Uh, um, I am a senior at James Monroe High School in Virginia. I'll be coming to St. Mary's in the fall, and um, I'm interested in, like, theater and performance. Mm. Oh, excellent. That's really exciting. Have you done much in high school? Um, yeah, I've done, uh, I've done some, some performances, both, like, with my school and uh, outside of it. I think I'm sort of um, excited to get into a bit more like straight play acting because um, there's a lot of focus on like the school musicals like that's sort of the big thing mm -hmm. and I'm not as much of a like singer so um, you know I have a lot of fun with the musicals but I don't think it's my area mm -hmm. uh, so I have uh, I have some experience and I'm definitely interested in doing more. Cool. Well, we're excited to have you with us. Thanks for joining. Yeah, thank you. Um, 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 let me double check. How about, oh, my name twin. I have a name twin. Leah, Leah Harsanyi. Did I say that one right? Um, hi. Hi. My name is actually pronounced Leah. <laughs> okay, Leah. <laughs> um, I'm a senior at Clarksburg High School in Maryland, um, and I'm pretty much interested in like all aspects of theater and film. I haven't really decided what I'd want to like specifically 
be doing. I think uh, acting is really fun. And I also think all like crew and like design is really interesting as well. Mm. Excellent. Excellent. Have you done much stuff in high school? Um, a little. I mean, I've been involved with the crew um, at my school, uh, like set design and stuff. And then I've also done, we have like acting classes and we go to like festivals. So I've done that. Um, yeah. Excellent. Well, we're glad to have you here, Leah. Nice <laughs> you um, too. So I guess we've everybody, I'm going to circle right back around one more time to Lily Thomas. Did, do you, did, would we, you like to... did we speak with Luke Miller? Yes. Luke we was did? the first person we spoke with. Twice. I'm <laughs> old. I apologize. It's okay. Cool beans. So I guess we can jump right into the, the presentation. Yeah. Yes. Are you, so what you do, Leah, you just share the screen. Is that it? Mm -hmm, yeah. Okay. All right. So um, this is super, super, super short. Um, hold on, let me, oh my gosh. Um, so, Leah? Yes. When I've, when I've done Zoom with my students and done PowerPoint, mm -hmm. uh, they have much preferred that the, sc that the screen don't go like that. Really? Yeah, well, I don't know why, but they say it's much easier for them to follow. I don't know why, but you can, you can ask the group. Do y'all do y'all have a preference as to whether or not it goes full screen or not? Not particularly. Not particularly. <laughs> I have no preference. Okay, cool, excellent. I'll go to I'll go to um, the present presentation view, and if anybody's having difficulty keeping up, just kind of like stop your open your microphone or whatever, and let me know. Okay, is that good? Nobody, I can't see anybody, so that's totally fine. I can't see anybody. <laughs> this, is fine. this is fine for me. Okay, cool beans. Well, now you'll be able to call the students bluff on whether or not it's really difficult to follow the next yeah, time. All right, Leah, can I ask a question before you begin? Yeah, for sure. Is there any way that we can share this with the students so the students can have the, how do we do this? Can they have this? So, is, sorry, I was going to no, say there is a video, this is being recorded so they can go back and look at it further. Oh, great, um, okay. And, and then Leah, did you have other suggestions if it's going to be posted or something on your page? Um, yeah, I can. So all of this information, the link to our website is at the bottom right here. So um, smcu backslash tfms. Um, yeah, I, just, I just wanted to make clear to the to the perspectives mm -hmm. that if they go back to this, that there is the web address, and yeah. so that will lead them to any any answer that they would need about the programs, both of the programs. It's all there. Yes. Or if y'all have a place that you've been sharing resources for incoming students, I can certainly send it to, to y'all and you can do with it as you wish if that's, if that's amenable to y'all in admissions. Um, I think individual counselors tend to reach out um, okay. with contacts if people have questions about those kinds of things. I know in my wheelhouse, I do that all the time with different majors, so. Okay, um, cool, yeah, we can totally send this out to whomever reaches out to us. Perfect. Does that work? Cool. So this is a super brief um, presentation on, it's not really a presentation, it's just kind of to give you all a rundown, the lay of the land um, in TFMS. Um, so as you can see, our website um, for, uh, for our department website, thank you very much, for our department website is here. It is a live link. So if you do want the, if you do want the, um, presentation you can just follow the link directly there and, and uh, can, I, yeah. can, I inter can i interject for a second sure. what, you all, what you will also find on our website um is a link to a photo gallery of past productions that we have done as well as past film series that uh, we have curated so if you're interested in the history of the kind of theater productions we do the range of work that we do or, or what we focus on for our film series, I would strongly recommend that you go to the website and it's very clear in the navigation on the left on our homepage how you can link to the various galleries. Right, and you can go to Flickr and, and look at things yes. all the way back to 1995, is that correct? Yes, you can go back to prehistoric times, that is true. I know, right, before the internet? <laughs> before electricity. Oh my gosh. I'm kidding. <laughs> Excellent. So um, just to give you a rundown of who is in the department. Um, so we have Professor David Ellsworth. Um, he's an associate professor of film and media studies. He is, as Mark mentioned earlier, our filmmaker. Um, where did he get his MFA from, Mark? Do you know? 
Um, um, Iowa, Iowa State, which has That's one of the best experimental film programs in the country, yes. Excellent. And so um, Professor Ellsworth is also the chair of the department. Um, he, he, will be, he will be here in the fall, but he's going on sabbatical in the spring. And I believe, Mark, you are, you are, are... I will be interim chair while he is gone, yes. Right, excellent. Yeah, so um, Professor Ellsworth is really wonderful. Um, he's, he's chair, so he's got his, his, um, his, he's spread pretty thin right now, um, but he's absolutely wonderful to work with. Um, he teaches teen film, um, screenwriting, yes. media production, um, production modes, right? All of that. Yeah. Did I miss anything about what he teaches? Pardon me? Did I miss anything that he teaches? Um, no, no, he is both um, a practicing filmmaker himself and a quite good one. Mm -hmm. um, he teaches the production area of film video um, and he is also a quote unquote scholar. And I put that in quotes, meaning he's not a published scholar, but he does teach film studies as well. A, um, a 200 level course on film and media production modes, as well as world cinema that we share with each other and a topics course on teen films or coming of age in American cinema, yes. Right, they screen some pretty good stuff in there. Well, I know he's done 13 and what else does he show in teen film? Do well, the know? usual, like Rebel Without a Cause, of course. Yeah. There's some Beach Blanket Bingo, but okay. none of this will make sense to any <laughs> students. I don't know. Some film buffs may, may be familiar with the Beach Blanket Bingo. <laughs> um, next, we have Dr. Rhoda, right? So, um, Mark, he introduced himself to you earlier. Um, he does a lot of stuff in, in film um, and media studies, but um, Mark also directs uh, many of our main stage productions. Um, I quite enjoy working with him as a designer. Um, we most recently collaborated on The Nether, which was unfortunately um, put on hiatus. Canceled. Well, no, I, I wish it was put on hiatus. It was right. Well, yeah, it was actually canceled. It was put on hiatus first. And I can't. Yes, this, this past weekend, we should have been in tech for the show, yeah. which would have opened this Wednesday. Yeah. Um, but we had to forego it. Unfortunately, it's a brilliant script, and I was having a hell of a good time uh, with a very small cast of only five students. Um, but it was really great. Yes, the stuff that I have done in the past in terms of recently in terms of directing for the main stage. Uh, well, first, I am directing the musical Hair mm -hmm. in the spring. The last musical I did was Spring Awakening. Um, I've done, I do kind of eclectic stuff. I did Kurt Vonnegut's Happy Birthday, Wanda June. I've done Eugenia Onesco's The Bold Soprano. I did a, a couple of um, one act plays, one by Samuel Beckett called Catastrophe, the other by political activist, Polish playwright Slavomir Mocek called Striptease. Um, so I'm kind of not the usual narrative theater person that um, you might um, be most familiar with from your work in high school, for example. Um, and so I am kind of both the other director, main stage director, who is Amy Steiger, we kind of balance each other off really, really well because our interests are so divergent. Uh, right. which is very nice. So it, it leads to a, um, a nice balance of the kind of material that is produced annually. Correct, right. Um, so and, next as, and as Leah said that, yeah, I, um, I do both performance studies stuff and I do mainly now film and media studies. Excellent. Um, so our next director that we have, um, our next faculty member, also director for the main stage, um, Dr. Steiger. Um, she's an assistant professor of theater. Um, she got her PhD in performance as public practice from the University of Texas at Austin. She does a lot of stuff, um, community-based theater, um, a theater for social change. Um, she, this past fall, she directed a site-specific production of Macbeth. Um, it was like a 25-person cast and we were running through historic St. Mary's City at night. It was pretty fun. Um, what else has she done? Dr. Seigers also, she does, um, she focuses a lot on, um, playwriting, new student work. So we've done a new student work festival, which, um, 
ends up in our, which ended up in our main stage season. We did that two, two seasons ago. They collaborated with um, an art history course and it was super fun to work on. Um, this coming year, she's actually doing something really interesting. Um, she's directing twice in one season, which is a lot. Um, and so in the fall, she will be directing Claire Barron's Dance Nation, which is a really exciting script. It's absolutely absurd and I love it. Um, it's really big right now um, in a lot of um, regional areas. And then she's also teaching a course on um, community-based theater in the fall, and they will write a show um, and kind of work around a design that I collaborate with them, um, I collaborate on with them, and then we will produce that as part of our main stage season in the spring. So we did that two years ago, three years ago, I don't remember, um, but it's a really fun opportunity for students to get some original work out there. Um, me, I've introduced myself. Um, David Smith um, got his MFA from Rutgers. He is our um, resident technical director and lighting designer. He also teaches our stagecraft course in the fall. Um, and then in the spring, he usually teaches a topics course. So he's taught our lighting design course this past spray, or he's currently teaching lighting design this, this semester. And then he will also, I think he's looking into teaching some stage management courses. Yes, no, Mark? He's doing what? looking into teaching stage management is that yes, we yes. Spoke about that right so students who get an opportunity a lot all of our productions are student run um essentially students really take the lead and they and they go and you have a lot of oversight on what happens and so um david is really committed to helping students feel as prepared as they possibly can going now in. did did you mention that david is also a former student david is also a former student um when did i don't remember what year both uh, what year did he graduate? I believe, I want to say 93, 4 or 5. Excellent. So David is a former student um, and there are a lot, we do have a lot of alumni support in the department. Um, so it's really spectacular to see. Yes. Also, um, we collaborate pretty closely with Bill at HCCC and yes. a lot of our, a lot of our um, alums. So it's really spectacular to have them in and around the building throughout the year. Um, and then we also have um, another support staff person, Sherry um, Oker. She's our costume shop manager. Um, she is my right-hand woman. I wouldn't be able to do a lot of the things that we're able to do um, in production without her. So um, yeah, those are the people that make up the department. Um, yeah, and that's, that's where we are. So really quick, a rundown of the majors and minors that you have. So we do a BA in theater, film, and media studies with a theater studies emphasis, or you can do a BA in theater, film, and media studies with a film and media studies emphasis, or you can do both if you choose to double major. Super fun stuff. You can minor in both of those areas, and we also have a dance and movement minor. Um, currently, how many people do we have in that, in that faculty members? How many do we have two adjuncts? And so you will take a range of courses. So I have requirements pulled up here. So you'll take movement one, modern dance one, and then dance and history. And then you can take really, there's a range of courses. So um, intro to traditional African dance, you can take dance and history, um, movement to modern dance to improv and composition, um, and then whatever other, I believe we're doing a topics course in hip hop this coming fall, if I'm not mistaken, right? So um, it depends on the adjuncts we have in the department and what their specialties are, but you will oftentimes have the opportunity to take something like that. I know a few years ago, like circus stuff was offered as far as like a topics course, which was yes, pretty what, cool. what, what we don't, what we rarely offer in terms of dance, particularly our classical forms of dance, mm -hmm. have done ballet, but that's rare. Mm -hmm. um, we keep it mainly uh, modern contemporary. Right, and it really does help with the movement for stage and whatnot. I know students who have mentioned um, working uh, or being in a dance course while also being cast in a show and they're really figuring out how their body moves through space, right? And the composition um, are the effects that um, their body moving through that space has on the composition. So that's really what it focuses on. Mm -hmm. Anything else about majors and minors? No, you, you hit it. Cool means, perfect. Um, next, we have creative opportunities. So what I really love about a BA program as opposed to a BFA program um, is that students really do have the opportunity to get your hands dirty in a lot of different areas across the major. Um, so as far as theater is concerned, I have our 2020-2021 season up there. Um, so we'll do Claire Barron's Dance Nation in the fall. We'll do Hair the Musical in early spring of 2020. 
21. And then we have the community-based theater course, I believe is TFMS 480, correct? Yes, as far as I know, yes. Okay, okay perfect. Um, and that piece will be produced late spring 21. Um, so there are tons of opportunities for students. We have paid opportunities for students working in um, props, scenery, um, scene painting, sound, lighting, costumes, all kinds of stuff. So there are paid opportunities for you to earn a little bit extra cheddar while you're here, um, but also um, lab requirements. Students are required to do um, six semesters, if I'm not mistaken, six credits of our lab, which is essentially two to three hours of work a week in, um, in various areas in theater. So you do get a lot of hands-on experience um, with each production that we're working on. And then we have something super cool um, with the film and media studies aspect, which is our film series. We're going into the 12th film series. Mark, if you wanna talk about that. Yes, what, um, in the past we used to produce four main stage shows, but when we introduced a film and media studies curriculum now going on to 12, 15 years ago, we took one of those slots um, and devoted it to a film series in order not only to accommodate everyone in the department, but particularly those with a film media studies focus and what our film series um, habit habitually uh, include are, uh, is participation by filmmakers themselves. So um, if, for example, um, the focus that we are going to um, have this year in the fall, and it's a series that will take place largely during October, going into the very beginning of November, is on Cuba. We are um, working with a woman that I have worked with before on a film series, um, our last one we did on indigenous media from North America and South America. Her name is Argelia Hurtado Gonzalez, and she is in international languages and cultures, um, Spanish. That is her focus. So we are curating a series on Cuba, looking at both post-colonial, meaning post-1960 or 1959, post-colonial cinemas, um, as well as more contemporary cinema from Cubans, who are in diaspora, either by self-imposed exile or um, have left Cuba and are still making films elsewhere. And often what happens is when any filmmaker is in diaspora, they have a very interesting relationship with their home country. And what they do is they, they often make films while elsewhere about their home country. Um, and it's very, very interesting the kind of work that is done. So we are going to be focusing on that this year, and it's going to involve scholars, those who um, have an expertise in post-colonial Cuban cinema, uh, and in more broadly speaking, post-colonial Latin American cinema. Um, Latin American cinema is extraordinarily important now, very, very important. Um, but this is, yeah, that's the kind of work we do. And as I had mentioned earlier, um, if you go to our website, you'll be able to see a whole series of past um, film series. Right, yeah, and then there are also a few images of, of the past three film series, I believe, that I included. Okay, and can, can, I, can I point out something on this slide? Yes. The person operating the tripod there, the camera on the tripod, that's David Ellsworth, the chair of our department. Yeah, where is he in that image? Um, he is in, um, it's either China, or I don't know. I think it's it's China or Japan. Yeah. So he often wears double plaid. So you'll know David. Yes, he does. He wears, wears double he's, plaid. He's, <laughs> right. Admittedly, he's an awful dresser, but it's it's okay. He's really He's a really spectacular filmmaker. So that's a cool picture of. Um, David Ellsworth that I decided to put on here. Um, and then these top two images are just some promo images. So the one on the right is from um, this past fall, Beth. And then this image is from a student written, student directed work in our New Works Festival that we had a few years ago, last year, not a few years ago, it's just last. So um, looking at a few, just so you can kind of get a feel for the type of work that we do. Um, visually. So these are two stills from a season two, two years ago, I believe. So the one on the left um, is top of show for Spring Awakening, the musical um, which Mark directed. And then the one on the right is Malvolio from um, Twelfth Night, a um, uh, professor who's no longer here directed that, um, but it was absolutely spectacular. Mark, I don't know if you want to talk about Spring Awakening at all since it was our last musical that we did and we've got one coming down the pipeline. Um, um well, I actually don't have much to say about the show. Uh, I had a really, really good time working on it. I think the students yeah. had a really good time working on it. Um, 
it was one of the more quote unquote spectacular um, musicals that I have uh, directed here. The one that comes closest to it uh, is a Bertolt Brecht, uh, Elizabeth Hauptmann, Kurt Weill musical from a long time ago called um, Happy End. Mm. Um, uh, this um, Spring Awakening was really, really cool. I had, I, well, this was the first show we worked on, right, Leah? This was the first show we worked yes. on together, yeah. Um, I, I just love working with Leah on design. Um, oh. it, um, well, on any show. It, it's, it's really, really a joy uh, to work with her because we're kind of like in sync and we were certainly in sync with, um, with the musical. Um, I just saw um, the musical performed at um, Roundhouse. Roundhouse Theater in DC. They produced Spring Awakening. I thought it was awful. I thought mine was better. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about Spring Awakening. I, I really <laughs> thought the Roundhouse production was awful. Um, and Visual I, was super cool, but. And, um, and about this um, 12th night, this is 12th night, right? It is 12th night, right? So I kind of put, pulled these two images because um, we do quite the range of work here, yeah. right? So everything from Shakespeare, um, I, uh, y'all uh, haven't done the Duchess of Malfi. You wanted to do the Duchess of Malfi. You I would love to do the Duchess of Malfi. Right, so you can see how we're pulling classical pieces, but also more contemporary musical pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and then to see kind of like the production styles of both of them. So this image here on the left is from this past Falls Macbeth. Um, it was how we produced in historic St. Mary City, which was super fun. It was a roving Halloween production. So we produced at night um, in the State House. And then we also kind of took our audience members on this walk through historic in the dark. It was like herding cats in the dark. It was terrifying. It was really fun though. Um, we had a lot of people show up. It was a limited audience. So it was um, really awesome. It added a, a really interesting facet to the production. I believe there was um, like a fire in that fireplace and it was usually dark outside. So don't pay attention to the light outside of the windows. Um, we have a chat really quick. Hold on. So Ellie oh, said she went with her oh, sister. Great. It was amazing. Excellent. Cool. Thanks so much, Ellie. Thanks, Alex. Glad to see it. Um, and then this top right image here um, is from Happy Birthday, Wanda June. And what I really enjoy about the fact that what we do production wise here is that um, Mark and and um, even even Dr. Steiger down here in this image for the New Works Festival, we incorporate a lot of technology into our productions, right? So the Nether, um, we actually hired a, a designer from New York. Um, she was slated to come down and help us open the show. She designed productions for it um, and media content, right? So we have a lot of student involvement with this. For instance, um, uh, Dirk Dupre, Dirk Dupre, right? He was a student, he was a senior, and he designed all of the video content for Happy Birthday, Wanda June. Um, and it was absolutely spectacular. So you can see more images of that on the website if you choose to go. Um, but then we also used it in a bit more subtle way down here in the New Works Festival. Um, they just kind of like prefaced um, or images prefaced each little vignette that kind of came up. Um, and so one, in one aspect, it was extremely integrated into the, the body of the piece. And then in other times it kind of bookended um, little chapters. So it, I really enjoy working on productions like that. And and can, I point, can I point something out, yeah. um, both about Macbeth and Wanda June? And the only reason why I'm pointing this out is that the woman that you see in the picture of Macbeth, her name is Nadia Galen. Mm. Um, she was a first year student when she got the lead in Happy Birthday, Wanda June, uh, the, one, the picture in the upper right. right. Um, she, got, she played the lead in that. The reason why I'm bringing, and she played the lead Lady Macbeth in Macbeth as a second year student, or, or is she third year, I don't, whatever. She, um, the, second the, year, but yeah. The, yeah, the reason why I'm pointing this out is that you don't need to be a junior or a senior, for example, to right. get lead roles or to be considered for substantial roles in any of our theater productions. Uh, auditions are open to everybody. Uh, we do not favor upper class students as opposed to first or second year students. Uh, if you are deserving of a role and you earn the role, if you are a first year student, you will be cast in that role. I have right. often used first and second year students in lead roles in my shows. So there's no favoritism in that way. Um, and that is a huge advantage uh, for coming into a smaller program than if you were in a very large program from a major university, say College Park, University of Maryland College Park, as opposed to here. 
um, you are incredibly restricted at larger institutions right. than you are at smaller. Um, you have, in other words, you are a bigger fish in a smaller pond at a smaller institution than a very small fish in a very big pond at a place like uh, College Park. Right. Or Towson, so, for that matter, any big place. Right, yeah. And it's really spectacular. So Nadia, you see here is Lady Macbeth. She also um, does, I believe she's minoring in, vo in music. Um, so she mm. takes voice lessons every single week um, and yes. she's been cast. There were two first year students in Wanda June. You also cast Jason Williams. Yes, um, Jason Williams. Right, yeah. So there are numerous students who their first year here immediately get cast in things. Yes. Um, uh, here. So here on the left, we have an image from um, Dr. Steiger's Beyond the Sunset. This is one of the productions, uh, the devised productions that she did. Um, this is like kind of like the final moment of that show. Um, this is Lakeisha Faraby. She was the senior that year. She was actually in the class. She helped write the show. Um, and then she helped cast it and, and then she was in it. So it was pretty exciting. Um, again, top right here, this is another image from um, uh, 12th night, the student sitting there, Feste, um, was a first year student, Blake Johnson, who was cast in all three shows that, that their first year. So, um, we also had, um, Ollie, who was a junior, a sophomore that year, I'm sorry, and then Daquan, who was a junior that year. Um, and then down here, um, another image from Spring Awakening. So there were a bunch of, were there, there were first year students in, yeah, Blake was in this, right? So there's yeah, was kind of an opportunity for students. Yeah. Um, to get involved in shows. Um, and then this is just kind of like the last three years of films here. They are out of numerical order. Mark, why did we not catch that? I thought you did that deliberately, actually. No, I didn't. I didn't at all. I thought you were testing, you wanted to test whether people were paying attention. <laughs> no. But yes, they are out of order. 10 follows nine, not 11, we know that. Uh, yes, this gives you a range of the recent ones. We did a, um, a film series, the ninth annual one was a celebration of films and filmmakers from the Baltimore area, um, or those who have a very, very close relationship to Baltimore, grew up in Baltimore, but now, for example, live either in Portugal or in the Netherlands, goes between the two, but a lot of her animated work was inspired by her living and going to school in the Baltimore region. Uh, the 10th one, Black Films Matter, it was about a movement that emerged out of UCLA in the late 60s going into the 70s called the LA Rebellion, an incredibly important Black film movement. It actually came on the heels of Black exploitation films of the 1970s, and it was a way of rewriting the narrative of Black subjectivity and Black lives. Um, and we managed to get uh, Charles Burnett, who is an incredibly important filmmaker, uh, to attend and to show his film, Killer of Sheep. Um, we also had Zainab Irene Davis, who was on the latter end of the film movement, the, the LA Rebellion movement, uh, who um, is a filmmaker um, who has made, or uh, I think about now about five, six years ago, uh, the first documentary on the movement, and she screened it before it actually went into theatrical release. She screened it for us. It's been a wonderful, it was a wonderful, wonderful series, and I have kept in very close contact with Zane Abu Irene Davis uh, ever since then. And then the most recent one, the one that um, I co-curated with um, International Languages and Cultures, the Spanish department, uh, was on indigenous media from the Americas, um, and we, um, again, um, invited a number of filmmakers in, both from Canada, indigenous filmmakers from Canada, as well as from South America. And we had one, Alvaro Sarmiento from Peru, whom I am still in touch with. I think it is Are really- Are you really? Yes, I am. I think it is he really great. Uh, he, even though he and his brother, they are co-directors, they often work with each other, even though they live in Peru, um, Alvaro spends a lot of his time in the Netherlands as well. Uh, because that's where his kid lives. So he spends time there as well. And he's currently quarantining or self-isolating in Amsterdam. He's not. Oh, well. I yeah, guess there are worse things to do. <laughs> uh, but this gives you an idea of the range of work that we do and an idea that um, uh, in, in as much as for a number of people that might, these might be heady subjects, uh, they aren't because what helps bring it down, if you will, is the involvement of the filmmakers. Uh, and right. students learn a lot about what goes on, what is involved in production. Right. So.
and oftentimes when the filmmakers are here, they actually go to courses, right? And they sit, it, yeah, so students get that one-on-one -on -one face time with them. Yes. Um, they typically also do a presentation or take a Q&A session after the screening of the film. Yes. Um, so yeah, it, there's ample opportunity for you to kind of like do some interfacing with these filmmakers, which is absolutely spectacular. Yes. Um, that is all for that. I guess we can open it up to questions now if y'all have some questions. Questions? 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 You can um, unmute yourself or you can drop them in the chat box here. Oh, I do one really quick. Cool, yeah, for sure. So, like, I had seen something that I guess a student had put online saying there was only, like, a musical about every three or four years at St. Mary's. Is that not the case anymore? Um, well, it may not be the case anymore because we did Spring Awakening, what, two years ago? I guess, no, I guess it is every three or four, yes. Okay, uh, I wasn't sure on the timeline of that. Yeah, no, no, no. And, and um, I mean, we have to be upfront about that. The, the mm. reason being, it's not that we don't want to do musicals. When we can, we do. Um, and we try and we, may, we ensure as a department that at least a generation of students will be acquainted with the musical theater form. If we can do it more often during that generation of students, we will. The big problem is, is getting the music department and the theater part of our program together to sync their schedules. Right. I, it's, we're lucky that we can do it, quite frankly, um, as often as we do. Uh, but as I said, if we have an opportunity to do it more within a generation of students, we, we absolutely do. For me, I love the musical form. I, I don't I don't know whether, who, who was it who was, Alexis. I don't know whether Alexis wants to hear this. The uh, one who wants to go to Broadway from Puerto Rico. Are you there, Alexis? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Um, um, I will, I hate the Broadway form. So I am much more interested. Yes, I do. I am much, yes, I do, Leah. I am much more interested in other, other forms of musical theater um, than what is typically Broadway. What is typically Broadway? Um, you, you really need to go to a school that has that kind of training. That's a particular kind of training. Uh, well, um, for now, I actually don't have preference. Um, I actually just want to prepare the best possible um, mm -hmm. for my future to, you know, whatever the opportunity um, um, like pops out, just if uh -huh. I could then take it or whatever. You know, I, right. all, all my goal here to study in whatever, whichever university yes. I go, is just like the performance thing and to and to absorb and learn all the things I could so I could be like very prepared for my future and you know that's oh, cool. right but for now that's my main way of thinking just um I don't have a preference in any university or conservatory mm -hmm. okay. or not or just right. nothing especially so right now I really I really like what I what I see here um Let's see. I really, I'm right now. I'm like, I'm searching for my. I'm looking for my decision and all that stuff. So right. it's a little bit. Well, I think what is really spectacular about the department um, is that though we don't do the trip, the typical triple threat, right, Broadway style type. You know, like can you time step and belt your head off, right? Um, what we do offer is tons of experience for students, yes. right? And you go very well prepared into an MFA search, which yes. is ultimately where you're going to hone all of those skills yes. that you're gonna learn, right? So um, I, I will say it again and again and again, MFA students, like there, there are tons of opportunities for you to find that, that opportunity if that's what you are, if that's what you are really driven to do at the end of your four years at St. And, and you know what, what is really interesting, um, I was just speaking the other day with um, a former student who is doing her undergraduate degree was, this is Mitch, her undergraduate degree was in um, the plastic art, studio art here. Mm -hmm. So she got a BA in art, uh, but she did a minor in film and media studies mm -hmm. and her heart really rests with animation, for example, mm -hmm. um, with film and media. Um, and I have been um, in touch with her ever since she graduated. She's now into her second year uh, as an MFA student at Ohio State University in Columbus. Um, and by the way, Leah, she got advanced to candidacy. She passed her final review before her thesis, which is great. Uh, yeah, I know, um, I saw. Oh, good. Oh, good, that's right, Instagram. So yeah. um, she told me um, that she cannot believe the value of the liberal arts education that she got at St. Mary's 
going into an MFA conservatory type program in a very large university as Ohio State, where students do not have that broad background. And um, as a second year student, she has, she's also been the uh, a teacher, I guess the, the teacher of record for yeah. a number of classes. And um, it, it, it's very difficult for her <laughs> to make clear to students um, that this kind of breadth that you would get at a liberal arts institution is in fact incredibly valuable right. for those going for an MFA particularly. Right. What we resist here is, a, in, certainly in production, is a kind of conservatory training. We, we firmly believe that the value of an education is breadth. Now that doesn't mean when you major in a particular program that you aren't focusing a particular curriculum in an area, whether it's performance or design technology, or whether it's film studies, or if your interest is in film production. But what you add to that particular focused curriculum is the breadth that you will get. Uh, that really is invaluable. And I'm speaking, I mean, I came from a liberal arts education. Um, I, it's incredibly, incredibly valuable. Right. So Marguerite asked the question, when shooting a student film, does St. Mary's provide travel to different shooting sites or does it all have to be shot on campus? Um, so Mark, do you wanna, do you wanna take that one? I would say, I would, <laughs> I would prefer that stuff wasn't shot on campus. Right, we see it all the time <laughs> in student films. <laughs> yes, well, I mean, I, I think a lot of it has to do, why students do that? Why students use campus locations and in as much as they try to hide the fact that it's St. Mary's campus, the reason why they use it is the time that they don't have necessarily to go elsewhere. Um, right. It might mean abandoning a few classes, other classes, if they were to go off. Um, we don't have a separate budget to circumvent the costs of, shoot, of students shooting at different locations off campus, but that also doesn't prevent students from requesting that kind of support from the department. Right. Um, and depending on where you would go um, and how long you would need to be there to shoot uh, would be a matter of whether you would get approved for that kind of budget. At the same time, students can get certified to drive a state vehicle. And if you, if you get certified to do so from public safety on campus, uh, you can request the use of a state vehicle and you can go for free in terms of getting there, right. um, getting to a location. Uh, in other words, you don't have to pay for gas in order to do that or worry about wear and tear on a vehicle because you would get that through um, the fleet of cars that the college has. Does that help? Yeah, I totally think. And, and also um, students, um, it, uh, we, have, we are a largely residential campus. We are a residential campus yes. and not every student has the means to get off campus, but we do have, um, we do have a small public transit system down here um, and it does run. There, there are shuttles that leave campus. So if you don't have access to a vehicle, um, then you do, there are ways to get off campus to go shoot. But like Mark said, as far as funding opportunities, you would have to reach out to the department or find the funding and, and request. Um, Ellie, do you think the musical theater aspect will grow once the new arts building is done? Um, no problem, Marguerite. Um, I don't know that that is right. So that's not necessarily what is, is holding back this, this idea of musical theater, right? So we are um, an extremely small department. Um, we, as of now, we currently have two faculty members who direct every season. Um, the burnout is real sometimes. Um, we also have brought in guest directors. I think, as Mark mentioned, it really is the confabbing with music to make sure that all of their extracurriculars and all of our extracurriculars are going to be able to gel that particular season. Personally, I love musical theater. I think it's absolutely spectacular. I, my first year here, we did Spring Awakening and I was jazzed. And now three years later, we're doing this. And as long as I can push for something like that, I totally will. Um, I think um, it really d could depend a lot on the type of student, the student body that we have coming in, the population of the department, um, mm -hmm. what, what students want out of all of that. Mm -hmm. Um, the new arts building won't be in circulation until the spring of 2022, if I'm not mistaken. So if you were to come, Ellie, um, it would be later in your tenure here. Um, would it change? I don't, we, we've tossed around the idea of doing like a musical theater certification 
where students could take so many classes and do like a certification in musical theater. We've tossed around that idea. So it really would, I can't give you a, uh, I can't give you a hard and fast answer on that, on your question. Well, yeah, the only thing that I would caution any prospective student in terms of the new arts building, uh, yeah. don't translate new arts building or new facility into increased personnel. Right. That, that's where our problem is, mm -hmm. is, is the personnel. It's not that we don't want to do it. Yeah. If we had larger programs, both in music and in theater, particularly, uh, mm -hmm. we might have more opportunity to do um, a much broader range uh, of theater forms, including musical theater forms. Um, but uh, the new arts building going in doesn't mean that we will have more opportunity to do musical theater. Yeah. Right. And it's also the, the it should be noted that the new arts building for the new academic building for the arts doesn't have any theater space. Mm -hmm. It has recital hall space. Yes. But we are the only theater space on campus with true theatrical facilities. So a lighting grid, um, uh, the ability to roll out a Marley floor, um, a sprung floor, all of those different things. We have the access to those in the Bruce Davis Theater, um, but the new academic building for the arts only has a recital hall. So just so you're aware of what, what the new academic building for the arts will have in it. Um, do we have any other questions? I have a follow-up question, if you don't mind. Sure. So what about like internships? So Ellie was talking about musical theater. Mm -hmm. Do students do any kind of internships out in town with any of those local theater companies? I know there's quite a few of them within the Southern Maryland areas. So is that something that somebody with um, interest in musical theater could possibly get involved in that? Right. So we do have um, one student in particular, who, three students, I'm lying, three students in particular who have a really close relationship with um, uh, Three Notch. We have one student who graduated last year who was really close with Port Tobacco players in La Plata. Um, but so it's, those are community theater opportunities for students. We do have students who go on to do semi-professional work in true internships. So we have one student who goes every summer to Baltimore. She's from Baltimore area um, and she performs forms and she teaches and all of these things for musical theater, summer camps. Um, we've had one student who's been really interested in arts administration um, and she has she has gone every summer to a theater in Frederick's and Frederick, Frederick, um, and she has done arts administration internships with them at their theater. Um, we have one student who's getting ready to graduate. He has actually worked professionally with me on a show in DC this past year. Um, I took one student to Chicagoland area a few summers ago and she was a resident stage manager and assistant lighting designer. Um, so there are tons of opportunities for students to get that real world experience outside of an academic setting. It's just a matter of um, a student reaching out to us and saying, hey, I want to find an internship. I want to, because trust me, theater, we, you know, like students are, you are the next generation of thespians. And so we have to prep you somehow. So internships are really that way to go. Um, websites like offstagejobs.com, usitt.org, um, theater communications group, art search, all of those websites already have postings up for um, obviously modified summer internships. Um, there are internships as close as DC, as close as Richmond, um, and then farther away in New Jersey and New York, and, and then all across Colorado and, and you know well into the West Coast. So there's tons of opportunity for internships in theater. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Any other questions from anybody? No? Are we good? Are we good? Are we? I don't know. We have them a little over time. Apologies for that. You've been listening to us bump our gums for quite some time now. <laughs> I wish, you know, that there's, no, there's, there's no way. I wonder if anyone would be interested. Could we connect to our gallery of shows that we've done? We can't do that, can we? No, I can drop the link. What do you mean? Huh? I can I can copy a link in the in the um, chat section here so students can take right, it. Would that allow us to share with them live or not? I mean, I can share the screen and 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 take them there if they would be interested. We can certainly do that. I don't know if students need to yeah. head out, Dina. If you need to help head out or whatever, and it's really That's up to right. students. Yeah, we. You know, you might need to cut out, right? Absolutely, yeah. But I just wanted to shout a quick thank you to everybody that joined today. Um, and 
Um, I would say just really quickly, you can drop that link and then people can head back to the rest of their days. I thank you both for um, hosting this meeting today. I was uh, just enthralled in just learning more about your program. And right. um, I think we have a good smattering of students who are interested and I truly hope to see them on campus and productions in the future. Right, likewise. It was great meeting everyone. I just dropped the link to our website over on the left hand side. If you click the link, it'll take you to our main stage season galleries. And from there, you can follow that link into the Flickr account. And it has literally everything we've ever done since okay, cool. five. Excellent. Um, and, and, and enjoy yourselves. I hope the end of your semesters go well. Yeah, likewise, likewise. And we're excited to see you on campus in the fall. Yes. Hopefully, fingers crossed, right? Everybody Absolutely. stay safe and go okay. wash your hands. All right. Yes. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. So are you leaving late? So Leah left. <laughs> Bye, Dina. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.